let's let's try and get this 900 horsepower monster on the triple plate clutch in the building so people always say that the sunlight is the best source of looking for swells and defects now I actually used to believe that years ago before lights were available. When I say lights available, the new type of lights, there's strip lamps and straight lights and they help you see different defects to the sun. So what we're going to do, we're going to drive it in now and you're about to see that at the moment at the sun, this bonnet looks very, very good condition. The customer said all it needs is a polish. Then as we drove the car indoors, we could start to see the defects. When I say defects, I mean um, sinkage and now it's really dull and matte, a really poor texture to the finish. The problem is the sun does actually bleach out on lighter colors. You can't see the defects. Well, swells being only one of the defects. But let's stop the car. And now you can see on the straight edge, it's all the regular patterns, which we can rectify. We can fix that. But if you were to look at that with a round torch only or sunlight, it's got what we call a flat light, a diffuse light is helping us see a completely different type of defect. Hi guys, Kelly Harris from Lake Country Manufacturing. That's cool, isn't it? That's really cool. I can remember the first Fast and Furious film and that's just pulling at my heartstrings. As a car guy, I'm sure you're a car guy. If you're watching our channel, you're a car guy or a car girl. That is something rather special under the bonnet or the hood. Depends if you're obviously from the UK or America. It's trick. You will get to see it, but what you're gonna to have to do is carry on watching. You can't go because that's got a 1200 horsepower motor. The rear wheels are a la drag racing. They are huge and it's street stroke drag racing car. So it might look on camera like it's pristine, brand new. It's technically brand new paint. Yes, it's had a repaint, but we can make it better. There's the obvious one, overspray. Hey, when is a car never not overspray and it's painted? So let's go and have a look closer. It is actually not the worst respray I've seen. Bearing in mind this is a custom body work, there's a lot of custom work going on here. What we've got is the usual sort of swells, focusing up on these areas here. We've got some really bad swells there and there's some localized sanding marks. And of course, it's always gonna be, yep, it's always the edges where they're sanded and they're not polished as much, but we spoke about overspray, so let's go and have a look, shall we? There's lots and lots of tiny, tiny white dots. Those are, even on the rubbers, there's white dots all over all the screens. We can remove this quite easily. Right, so this panel, the hood, the bonnet, it has various defects. It does look very low and clear coat. It's very inconsistent. We've got the silicons, the dry spots, we've got sanding marks, we've got dirt still in the paint. Weave showing and weave not showing. It doesn't look very good, it looks terrible. So. Literally, the safest way here, because we can do that here at Lake Country, is we have a spray booth, we have the knowledge, we have the equipment, we are masters of paint. Been doing paint for 20, 30 years, you know, painting and restoring cars. I did tell the customer when we brought the car in, look how bad this is. The rest of the car has got healthy clear coat. This doesn't even look healthy to me. I know for experience, if I try to measure it, it's pointless. It wants clear coating again. So we're gonna take this off. We're gonna prep this panel. We're gonna put it in a spray booth. We're going to clear coat this, we're going to then sand and polish it to make it like glass and we're going to refit it. Stay tuned to see this process. So as you can see, the bonnet, the hood is now off the vehicle. Me and Justina removed the panel. 
I've had a good look at it now. Obviously, I can walk around it much closer now, and I can see the issue is worse than we obviously imagined. Now I can look straight down all different angles instead of it just being one angle it's popped up. So any sort of defects like sandy marks, buffer lines, silicons, or, they're fine because when I'm going to key that up when we put new lacquer on, we cover, we bury those. What I mustn't do is go through the colour, go through to the colour, the clear coat. So I'm just going to use a sanding pad, but this is a soft sanding pad. I'm just going to lightly key the surface and then use a scotch pad at the end. The key here is literally to key the surface without breaking through the surface, giving us a nice clear anchor, good anchor for the, the clear coat. So I'm going to start sanding. I am going to use the 1000 grit. I've done a little area over there. I'm going to do a little patch here, dry, just so you can see. All I'm trying to do is just ever so slightly mat the surface down. What I don't want is it shiny. I mustn't have a shiny surface. You can imagine, if you didn't realise, it's going to be much trickier on the edges where it's exposed. I'm going to be very, very slow and careful there where on the edges. I do not want to break through an edge. But the idea is, I can see where our strip lamps, doing it dry makes it easier. I can wet as well as long as I dry it afterwards, but I'm trying to do, as I'm sanding, I'm just looking to see when the bulb goes matte. This might be quite odd to a lot of people watching this process that they probably think when the surface is matte, it will never go shiny again. Trust me, it does. It's a, it's a weird thing the first time I saw it when I was probably 17 in my dad's body shop, which was over three, three decades ago, that I saw this go matte and I was like, well, that's wrecked. And then you put clear coat over it and it'll be all shiny again. You'll never see the sanding scores. So what we're trying to achieve is we're trying to make it matte. As you see perfectly there, one bulb disappearing and then the other bulb is still shining and that's disappearing. That's all we're trying to achieve is a key matte surface for the clear coat to apply. After this has been clear coated, it will be nice and glossy, and a much better finish.
obviously the Supra is above me. It's stunning. I'm going to do a recap of what the team's done here at Lake Country UK. Would you believe was over a week just underneath cleaning, polishing, hand cutting, hand, well, hand polishing, and then coating with two layers of a nano coating. Crazy work, very rarely does it ever get done. But anyway, you do need to see what it looks like underneath. It does look insane. Yes, it was driven here. It's not a daily driver, of course, something with as much horsepower and this sort of epic car. It's not a daily driver, but it was used and it was quite grubby and dirty. So we've gone around steam cleaning all the areas very slowly, very delicate, very labor intensive. Then checked, cleaned, hand cut where we can, and then cleaned and panel wiped down and coated. There's been some polishing going on as well underneath, but this actually is a huge labor intensive job. So is the engine bay. We've used microfiber cutting pads, we've used some finishing pads, and we've used cutting compound, but a little trick here. We've then used our one step orange HDO cutting pads, or sorry, one step microfiber pads, and used metal polish. We've tried a couple of brands and they all seem to work very well on anything that's bare alloy. So that includes the wheels, the rims, all the engine components, and if there was anything bare underneath here. But the rest of the painted areas, obviously we use normal cutting compound and then coatings. So using the LC Power Tools handheld light, we will light up underneath to show you how crazy the build is in this car and how clean it is. And imagine any of you detailers that put ceramic coating on the paintwork of a car, the outside. Imagine what it's like to do that. I'm glad Ashley did it. One of the team, not me. So really, we need to lower it down, then put the rims on, and then we'll take the car off the ramp, park it up so you can have a look at how beautiful it is. The Supra's ready. Looks stunning, looks amazing. I said ready, there's a panel missing. It's obvious why there's a panel missing. It's like the jewel in the crown there. It's like the jewelry box and that beautiful engine in there. So I need to show you around the car. As always, we'll do a long walk round of all the bits we fixed and how we fixed it. So the LC Power Tools light, let's go around the car and have a look because you're going to think it's amazing. Sorry. Sorry guys, drop the light. We're in a different area, different zone. We're actually at Waxdot 2023. The Supra is now on the stand. You'll notice some wheels missing. So let's go and have a look at the underneath. So you can imagine, you think we just paint, polish paint. Well, we've been hand cutting for ages and ages all underneath. So the car is pretty much finished. There's a few final touches that we'll do back in the shop and we'll show you all the process back in the shop. This is really quickly walk around because there's gonna be 4,000 people here. Apparently 4,000 tickets sold for wax stock. So it's epic, epic car, epic stand. You can see the excitement on my face. I'm buzzing and don't often buzz now, but this sort of car is insane, insane. The Supra's done. Looking amazing, looks really good actually. This went to a car show recently, a detailing show, one of the largest in the, in the UK or even in Europe. It grabbed some attention and it should do. It looks amazing. The bonnet, the hood, needed painting. Outside, it looks fine. The customer has owned the car for a couple of years. He said there's nothing wrong with the bonnet. The rest of the car had their sort of best polishing process detail you can possibly do. Brought the car in in this studio here under the light sources. As you can see, we have multiple light sources for different reasons, showing different defects. Put those lights on and it was instantly obvious the bonnet, the hood, is pretty much beyond even trying to sand and polish. Now, I may have fixed it, but it would be very low and clear coat. My experience told me it's pretty much not gonna work. It was pointless. So when I say I've painted it, we haven't actually painted it white. All I've done, I've re-clear really coated it. So there's been extensive polishing everywhere of the paintwork, including the front and rear lights. And then we've done a lot of machine polishing and hand cutting polishing of all the rims because they're aluminium, they're unlacquered, so uncoated 
They're not, when I say coated, I don't mean nano coatings, I do mean bare alloy. So the engine bay has also had a lot of work in there. Where we can, we've used the Bay Country pads, the one, two and three inch pads for localized polishing on a mini machine. But where some areas we can't, we've actually just hand cut with a microfiber. And sometimes we've even used a microfiber pad and we've cut it into little sections, made our own little applicators. But more importantly, there's a little tip here. We use normal cutting compound to sort of shine up the aluminum, the aluminum parts. Then we actually went to dedicate metal polish, but still using the same pads. So we were switching between microfiber and finishing pads on the wheels, the rims, and on the engine bay. And of course, underneath is looking insanely good. That's been extensively cleaned and then coated. And of course, all the interiors had a lot of work. I do remember, because this has been here for nearly four weeks, five weeks, if I recap, Pretty much it was two days of interior cleaning. The underside is over a week. We're talking five, maybe six days just underneath. Then there's about three days of the engine bay. And then of course you've got the polishing, which actually funny enough on this car, even though it's our best possible package we offer, the polishing on the outside of the car is the easiest process. Normally, that's the trickiest part. But yeah, this car is, um, it's not tested us, it's just taken a huge amount of time. You know, this is like, I could have detailed a standard detail, at least four cars in the same time as this car. We had sandy marks, we had the buffer trails, there was just like, just wear marks and build marks because this is obviously a painted car, then the car's built, the engine, the chassis, the suspension. So there's just a lot of handling marks and a lot of the usual culprit of what we captured anyway on camera is all the areas where it had like buffer lines and then it had sandy marks and it'll be all the difficult areas really where it is. So it's looking stunning, looking amazing. Really, all I need to do is sign out. Before I sign out, we have more exciting cars. Maybe it's not like some sort of crazy horsepower supercar or race drag car. Maybe it's a supercar. But we've got some more transformations coming. So you have to stay tuned. You know, I keep saying this, but you do need to stay tuned. Smash that bell so you get notifications. I'm Kelly Harris from Lake Country UK. Thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you.